Westerman, well on top of Arama Tabuai. From start to finish, he gets a unanimous points decision victory against Tabuai. And next up, it's going to be Anton Solopov showing his wares against Tuvela Ioni from Wellington in New Zealand, Australia, with a 3 0 lead over the Kiwis with two Australia v New Zealand matches to come. This one and our feature event. The tail of the tape, as you can see, Solopov enjoys a five centimetre edge in reach as the bottom line. He is also taller than his opponent. Both men, they are right on the 69.85 junior middleweight rank uh, division. Eight three minute rounds are scheduled. Ioni at 38 and inactive for the past four years He's certainly taken off taken on a very tough assignment here as he looks to resurrect his career he was last in action in november 1999 when he lost a 12 points decision to sean sullivan for the new zealand light middleweight title he's seen some big names in his time though so will ioni He's been against Mike McCarter, Australia's Kevin Kelly. Also lost to Sean Sullivan for the New Zealand welterweight title back in 1997. Sam Acuso, Alberto Marchong, all great New Zealand boxing names that are well known on this side of the ditch. But one wonders about a man coming back after a four-year absence in against former world amateur champion, who's certainly a man on the way up. But he looks pretty pleased to be here. Tavella Ioni. Obviously, the Wallabies getting over the top of the All Blacks hasn't disappointed him. Maybe it has, and he's just not going to let it show. Well, this is Anton Solopov. Anton Solopov, three fights as a professional, made his debut here on Fox Sports back on July 25 with a six-round win over Rico Chongni. Out of victories against the Sakracha in China in September and October 17, he KO'd Steve Irwin, who we had on the show just prior to coming on air. Steve Irwin did a good job there. But Anton Solopov is making a lot of noise here in Australia. Let's see what he's got for Tuvela Ioni. The semi-main event, we are scheduled for eight three-minute rounds and we are at junior middleweight. Introducing first in this international contest, first of all, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Wellington, New Zealand, a record 20 fights, 14 wins, six via knockout. Weighing in at 69.8 kilograms, the golden boy, Tuvela Ioni. Fighting out of the blue corner from Russia to Ringwood. He comes with world championship dreams. Three fights, three wins, two already inside the distance. An amateur star, 205 amateur bouts, a former amateur world champion. He too weighed in at 69.8 kilograms. Ladies and gentlemen, the Russian Russian Anton Solopov. Anton Solopov really has got that baby face like Kotsuzu. Welcome for this semi-main event at Bronx Service and Gus Securio, John Villa, your three ringside judges. Okay, Jack. Welcome to Centre Ring. Good, clean fight. Obey my instructions all the time. Shake hands before you come out fighting for the last round. All right, shake hands now. Go back to your corners. Good luck. May the best man win. Malcolm Bourne with the final instructions. Santon Solopov has already defeated one Kiwi, Rico Chongni, on debut. Now he wants to Vela Ioni. Ioni, inactive for four years. John, as you said, he looks happy to be here, but I, I, will, I would be willing to wage at the end of the first round if he gets that far, he won't be happy to be here anymore. And don't be surprised if he has trouble with traction as well. So Vela Ioni, the boots that he's wearing at the moment appear to be at least three sizes too big for him. Yeah, I think You'll see the toes else. of them are starting to <laughs> curl up. Box. He's got them strapped tightly. Here we go. The southpaw Anton Solopov undefeated in three fights against Tavella Ioni from New Zealand with Australia leading 3-0 in the international series conducted here at Fort Knox so far. Anton Solopov, very cagey. Incredible amateur career. 205 bouts, 185 wins as an amateur and a world amateur champion. That is an awesome record. 
And fantastic for the fighters factory of Blackburn and Murray Thompson to have such international quality sparring for everyone in the gym. Pick up some tricks from a world amateur champion. Now, he's, his first um, professional fight against Rico chong -Ni. I mean, that was a very... Rico chong -Ni is has shown since against his great fight with Gurkhan Ozkan. He is a real warrior and a very top-class fighter. And uh, Solopov, you know, did beat him. It was a tough contest, but he's shown... Anton Solopov, Solopov has shown that he's got a huge career in front of him. And this has good power in both hands. When he dropped chong -Ni in round number two here back in July, it was with the right hand. your typical European style boxer either Anton Solopov a very nice big pose very tight defense he's got punches well inside with the uppercuts and got a good jab got all the moves I only certainly you know too big a job I would imagine at 38 years of age and four years out of the ring to be coming back even though he has been in against some top world-class opposition Whacking away with a left hand inside the last 60 seconds of this first Frank. round. That grabbed the attention of Tavella Ioni. We have seen in Solopov's previous fights that he does get tagged a little more than we suspected. You can hit him with a right hand. It was, um, although I tell you, when he unloads, certainly puts them together. I only an experienced cagey fighter, but under a lot of pressure as we come up to the end of the round one. And I only certainly not looking like a man inactive for four years. Now he's moving quite well, even though he's uh, taking a fair bit of leather at the moment and wobbled there. Now he's in trouble. Solopov unloading on Ioni as the bell sounds to end round number one, and the Kiwi yeah. may even be saved by the bell. Yeah, I, I don't reckon this will go beyond the second round. I think uh, Solopov just starting to get on target there at the end of the first, and you'll see a lot more of that in the second. Just keep trying in those angles, right? All right? Nothing else. Not a lot of interest in the red corner at the moment. Anton Solopov in action here. The highlights of round number one all over to Vela Ioni, particularly at the end of round number one. Yeah. Well, stopping further punishment for the Kiwi. Ioni certainly not looking as uh, interested as he was at the start of the fight, that's for sure. The and smile did, has disappeared. I did tip that, actually. After one round, he wouldn't look as happy. Box. Yes, and you did tip pre-fight. This may only go to the second round as well, and we're in that stanza as Anton Solopov, Russian-born, now based in Melbourne. And the red trunks against Tavella Ioni, the 38-year-old on the comeback trail after a four-year absence. Why not take on a world amateur champion? Don't hold, don't hold. Rick. Yeah. <laughs> Short comeback it'll be, I think. Solopov such a mild-mannered character. Super composed, really, you know, really super composed in there. And got that, you know, baby face, doesn't look as though he's ever been hit with a glove. And Brad Vicali tells me that Anton Solopov may even be considered as a sparring partner for Costa Zoo, who of course faces Southpaw Shambay Mitchell. Yeah, well, that's that. You know, Koch is going to need some good southpaws, and this this man certainly is one. Is a very good southpaw. And this Paul Miller is another who is helping out the Costa Zoo camp in that fight with Shambay Mitchell on the 5th of Feb next year in Moscow as Koch returns to his homeland, and we wish him the best of luck. Regular viewer of big-time boxing here on Fox Sports, and 
without enjoying the contest and getting a close-up look at Anton Solopov here. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Hosh will be, you know, pretty happy with his countrymen at this stage of this fight, that's for sure. And I'm sure he's, when he goes back to fighting Russia, he's going to have, it's going to be an awesome, awesome support for him over there because he is one, undoubtedly one of the greatest athletes that Russia's ever produced. Solopov working to the body with some authority here against Tuvela Ioni. Minute remaining in round two. Pretty much one-way traffic. Go on, hang in there. There's been lean pickings for the New Zealanders here in Australia over the past couple of weeks. Sure has. Ioni bleeding from the nose, cut just near the bridge. A little more than 30 seconds left in round number two. Right, keep looking. 22 year old Anton Solopov. Probably troubled here by only at the moment. 22 with that amount of experience behind him, it's incredible. All he needs is uh, seasoning as a professional, and he's going to be a very hard boy to beat. Shot to the body again from Solopov at the end of round number two. Javela Ioni hanging in there to see the second round out, but I'll tell you what, he's going to cop a lot more. Like he copped that round for sure. It's all one way traffic again. I'm big breath, Anton. Big breath. Take your time. No, don't rush. You're going alright, this is good, you're getting the rounds. Put him high on the head. Hook, it, hook, hook your right hand over the top of his jab. Right high on his head. Two rounds completed, scheduled for eight. Anton Solopov in the red trunks, Tavella Ioni from New Zealand in the black and gold. Solopov well on top through the first two stanzas. And looking to up the tempo here. Whereas Tavella Ioni looking very fatigued in his comeback after a four year absence. Solopov showing no respect for the older opponent either. He's after. Ioni looking for a finish as Ioni lands a left hand. Good work there from Solopov. Looking for his openings. Likes the uppercut. He really likes that right uppercut and the left uppercut as well, which is... Uh, I mean, the uppercut is a dangerous punch to land, but he, he does it with style. But I only really, really trying. I mean, he's, he's got power. You can see the experience. Four years out of the ring and at 38 years of age, it's certainly a big ask. Chopping right hand there from Anton Solopov. Middle stages, round number three, and again, Solopov on top here. To Villani on the retreat, starting to show the Russians some tricks. Buy some time. matter of time. Big left hand from Solopov, holding and hitting as well, which draws a caution from Malcolm Bulner. Just too strong at the moment, too accurate for Tuvela Ioni. I'll tell you what, Solopov is deceptively strong. Just as we saw from Aaron Matsabuai, I only looking a little disinterested here under pressure. Yeah, no. 
Crushing left hand from Solopov. Not a lot coming back from Savella Ioni. A treat on his mind at the moment. You get the impression that at his peak, Savella Ioni would have been a good match for Anton Solopov, but not at the st this stage of his career, that's for sure. Solopov just biding his time. I think he knows it'll come eventually. A good game performance by Travella Ioni, but uh, all one-way traffic again. Grab him and hold him there to give yourself a bit more gas, okay? Just keep clutching and holding him, all right? You might be able to sneak the right hand in. Don't give up on him yet. Well, Anton Solopov on top. Tavella Ioni's corner not providing him with a great deal of confidence either. Survival tactics. Tell, he's trying to tell him more or less how to survive in there, which is going to be easier said than done. Now grab him and instead of trying to use your legs, save your legs a little bit. Round number four for the junior middleweight, 69.85 kilos, 11 stone in the old language. Anton Solopov in the red trunks, a southpaw from Russia, undefeated in three fights. Hasn't lost a round here so far. 30-27 for Barry Michael. I have 30-26 at the moment. And the Kiwis, who are down 3-0 in this international series, look like dropping further behind. As the instructions for Tuvela Ioni are to try and stay with Solopov rather than try and win the fight. And test for Solopov, though, if he's going to become a world champion in the professional ranks, just as he has in the amateur ranks, that he needs to see all sorts of styles and experiences I only in a lot of trouble here good little uppercut there from Anton Solopov right, keep walking keep walking there get up for it keep walking Solopov just having his way with Tuvela Ioni at the moment. Right, bring it up. Here we're looking at all of his 38 years of age. Box. Just another day at the office for Anton Solopov. Tremendous work rate from Solopov. Despite the tactics of Tuvela Ioni, he continues to work hard. So we move inside right, the last here, 60 here, seconds, round three. number four. Tavella Ioni looking very, very tired. Watch the shoulder, watch the shoulder. Solopov again, okay, landing big up, shots. Up, break, 40 break, seconds break, remaining break, break, break. of round four. Tavella Ioni certainly wishes he's somewhere else at the moment. And a good display from Solopov, whether at range or in close. Inaccurate with his punching. Precision punching there from Anton Solopov with both hands. Shown us a variety of punches as well. And he has limited success, and he goes to run a body shot from Anton Solopov. Beautiful Three, body shot, and I four, think that'll be enough. Five, Excellent six, shot to the body. Seven, eight, that is nine, all for Tavella Ioni, and Anton Solopov is now 4-0 and, oh and undefeated here in Australia. His third stoppage, and the world amateur champion is making big noises on the professional scene.
That was a clean shot to the body. You see that on slow motion. That that really hurt this guy. Well, on paper, it looked like a mismatch, and that's the way it transpired here. Because Tuvela Ioni, a four-year absence from the ring, is feeling the effects of stepping in against a former world amateur champion. Yeah, that was a pearl of a body shot. Dubbed the Crushing Russian, and he did just that. He sure did. One-way traffic from the opening bell. And Anton Solopov is raining blows on Tuvela Ioni. And under the weight of punches, could not continue. That was the shot. That was the body shot there. Right under the short ribs. Ioni on the stool in the centre of the ring. And now that smile is back. But Anton Solopov and Murray Thompson, the Fighters Factory, they are going places. We look forward to seeing Solopov uh, step up. Yep, I think uh, he will step up in style, this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, at a time of three minutes and four seconds of round number four, your winner and still undefeated, the Russian Russian. Anton well, there are some good junior middleweights or super welterweights in the world at the moment. Shane Mosley, Oscar De La Hoya, Winky Wright, Fernando Vargas, a long list of big names, and Nader Hamden and Shannon Taylor. Both ranked top 12 in the world in that division in terms of the Australian rankings. Daniel Dawson, undefeated in 11 fights, holds sway at the top of the tree. Shannon Taylor, Ian McLeod, Josh Clenshaw, all three in fact, all four, including Solomon Egberheimer, the current or former Australian champions themselves, and Ben Crampton rounding out the top five. And speaking of junior middleweights, well, that's where we saw the great Roy Jones Jr. start his career at the 88 Olympics, picking up a silver medal. He's gone all the way to the heavy rate, heavyweight division, but stepped back to light heavy for the WBC clash against Antonio Tava in Las Vegas back on the 8th of November. This is what happened. Roy Jones Jr. stepped into the ring 20 pounds lighter than when he claimed the heavyweight title in March. The pound for pound king of boxing, the five-time world champion and current WBA heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Antonio Tava came way down with titles. Right heavyweight. Champion of the world, Antonio Magic Man Tarver. The fight Jones failed to live up to its early billing. Jones had his moments, but Tarver held his own. We'll get to that more. I don't know how effective these shots are. They're not hurting Roy Jones. Punches were swapped for stairs as the mind game started in the middle of the third. But as the round ended, Jones was in control. That's a Jones round, though. Tarver tried to put Jones off his game by taunting him in the fourth, but the former king of the light heavyweights was on a mission. Relentless body shots had Tarver ready for the taking. The champ wasn't ready to go though and made a game comeback in the seventh as Jones dropped his guard. The onslaught continued in the eighth. Two pretty good rounds together, whether Roy Jones is letting him do it or not, that won't matter on the scorecards. And this is a different Tarver. In the ninth, there was plenty here. doubting Jones could live up to his reputation. With two rounds to go and his lead dwindling, Jones stepped it up. But Tava returned fire with fire, sending the fight into the 12th and final round. Neither got the upper hand in the last and the fight ended with both going all out for the win. It came down to the judges. For the winner by majority decision, and once again recognized as the universally accepted light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr.